In this video, I'll be showing you how we built the upper cabinets in our Ford Transit. We're going to cover the design, the construction, the mounting, and even the lighting. Welcome to Explorers.life. My name is Nate, and I teach people how to build DIY campers. Let's get started. We built our cabinets in SketchUp so we knew exactly what everything would look like and what size all of our cuts would need to be. We used the Open Cut List SketchUp plugin to export a cut list so that we could use as much of the sheet of plywood as possible with minimal excess. For this build, we are using 4x8 sheets of half inch birch. We printed our cut list for quick reference, and then we measured and marked our cuts. We made our initial cuts using a circular saw with a makeshift DIY track saw guide kind of thing. And then once the pieces were more manageable, we switched over to a table saw and used a crosscut sled for some more of the smaller pieces. To keep track, we used the labels from the cut list so we knew which cuts were which. And we ended up with an IKEA-esque assortment of rectangles. Since the walls and ceilings of the van are curved, we made a foam template for our upper cabinet verticals. We traced the foam onto our verticals and made our cuts. Next, Steph prepared all of the rear braces with pocket holes using our Craig jig. And finally, it's time to start assembling. We glued each piece with tight bond wood glue before we clamped it together, and then used Craig screws to secure our horizontal braces to our cabinet verticals. Then we attached our second horizontal brace to the verticals using a spacer so that we could make sure that our braces were completely even and parallel. Next we flipped our upper cabinet over and prepared it for our shelf bottom. For the shelf bottoms, we used quarter inch birch here. And once it was lined up, we used finishing nails and a nail gun to secure it in place. And after a quick dry fit, it was time to assemble the next two shelves using the exact same method. And just like that, our upper cabinets are ready for finishing and edge banding. We cleaned up the edges using a router and a flush trim bit, and then Steph sanded the edges that would be getting edge banding. Now this edge banding is just really thin, half inch wide wood veneer that has heat activated adhesive on the back. We clamped the edge banding in place and used an iron to melt the adhesive. And then we used a chisel for a clean edge on the ends. We put edge banding on any of the visible and unsightly edges. Next, we trimmed off the excess material using a chisel. And then filled in any holes with wood filler. 
and after letting that dry, we sanded the cabinets and Grace finished them off with paste wax. Next it was time to make brackets to attach the cabinet to the L-track of the van. For this, we used 2 inch by 8 inch and 1 and a half inch by 1 16th inch aluminum angle. With the drill press, we made holes to fit the L-Track hardware. The cabinet will sit on the 1 and a half by 1 16th inch angle, and then the two smaller pieces up top of 2 inch by 1 8 inch angle will attach to the ceiling L-Track. The top angle will attach to the cabinet itself with quarter inch bolts. We prepared the angle for painting by sanding and wiping it down with alcohol. To match the theme of the van, we spray painted the angle black. Next it was time to prepare the angle to attach to the cabinet by drilling equally spaced holes across the bottom. Now we're using rivets to secure the angle to the cabinet bottom, which just insert through the angle and through the wood, and then I used a rivet gun to fasten them together. And lastly, I attach the smaller brackets to the top. For the indirect lighting, we're using these black LED strip light tracks with a diffuser for our cabinet lighting. We cut them to link and countersunk our screw holes so the strip would fit flush. And then it was time to wire. We opened the LED strip light L connectors with a knife, paying special attention to which one is positive and negative. And then we loosen the terminal screws on our solderless LED connectors and inserted the L connector and tightened the screws with the world's smallest screwdriver. Now on the other end, we inserted our positive wire and our negative wire and tighten them down, paying special attention to which side of the L connector was positive and negative. Now those two wires got quarter inch wire loom and heat shrink to clean them up since they would be visible. I cut the factory barrel connector off on the LED light strip by cutting on the cut mark, and then inserted it under the pins of the L connector, paying special attention to positive and negative on both the L connector and the light strip, and then snap the connector shut.
We cut the LED strip to length by cutting on the cut mark and then wiped down the track with alcohol. Now these LED strips have an adhesive on the back and we just stuck it down to the track. We secured the wires for the lights down with some temporarily uh, white clips that we switched out for black ones later on and installed the diffuser. For the lights that will go on the bottom, we did the exact same process. And then we drilled a hole for the wire to feed up through the bottom of the cabinet. Then we prepared those wires for our Anderson plug. We attached the Anderson pins to our positive and negative wires. and then inserted them into the Anderson connector housing. Those wires also got wire loom and heat shrink. Now all those wires from the LED strips were connected to the wires for the Anderson port with lever nuts, positive to positive, and negative to negative. We brought the cabinet into the van and began to attach it to the ceiling and the wall L-Track. We tightened down all of the L-Track hardware and plugged our lights into the Anderson port that is connected to the switch on the wall that switches half of our upper Anderson connectors on and off. Now for the remaining upper cabinets, we did the exact same method and are super happy with the results. And that pretty much wraps up this project. We are super happy with how these cabinets turned out. They are strong, but also incredibly lightweight. And for actual storage, we are just using these cloth storage cubes so that we can take them out, rummage through them, and then put them back as we need. The diffused and indirect lighting gives a great feel to the camper when we're just hanging out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.